Thank you for joining us for another online sermon from Redeemer. We pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer, sanctify us with the truth, for thy word is truth. Amen. This morning, we focus in on Amos, and especially his calling from God. And so we'll look especially at verses 14 and 15 of Amos 7, where it says, Then Amos answered and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I was a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore figs. But the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go prophesy to my people Israel. Dear brothers and sisters in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, when you look around you in the world, what is it that you see? When we look at our own nation, what is it that we are beholding these days? We see a rise in crime, a lack of biblical morality, a confusion of what the truth really is, and an ever-increasing number of people who do not believe in the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There is a group that studies in great detail religion and Christianity in the United States the Barna Research Institute. It's about two weeks ago that one of the elders from St. Paul's in Bremen sent me a presentation by this man, and uh, it was a very striking presentation. And in his research, this is the thing that really struck me. He said that only 6% of all Americans base a worldview of life on the Bible. Now think about that for a minute. Only 6% of all Americans look to the Bible to understand the meaning and purpose of life. In that same study, he also noted that 88% of people practice syncretism, which basically means this. There's all these teachings out there, and I will pick one over there that I like and one over here that I like, and I will form my own world view of life. Now, if you don't understand what happens when this takes place, let me just share with you a conversation I had with someone who at one time had a worldview based on the Bible. And that is no longer the case. He started picking stuff and he formed his own belief system. And in talking to him, he said to me, there was nobody going to hell because God's love is too great to let that happen. There was no significance to what Jesus did on the cross. There was no accountability to God who had created any longer. He had developed his own value system so certain things that we would say were wrong were right for him because, well, that's the way people are. And there was no acknowledgement of sin any longer. Now, I don't know about you, but having 15 grandchildren, that scares me. We, as God's people, understand that a worldview of life has to center on the Bible. God is our creator. He made us. Christ Jesus is our redeemer. He saved us. The Holy Spirit is the sanctifier who guides us in the ways that we can honor Christ. But that is all founded 
upon the Bible. What do we as human beings, saved by the grace of God and Jesus Christ, do in this situation? What do what does Saint or pardon me, Redeemer Lutheran Church in Warsaw? What do you do about this? When I was thinking about this, I could see Jesus there coming into Jerusalem for the final time, and it says when he looked down upon the city, he said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who stoned the prophets and killed those sent to you. How often I would have gathered you together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you would not. He was grieving. He knew heartache. He saw people who lost an understanding to the worldview of life from a biblical perspective. And we can look at our children or grandchildren or great-grandchildren who are being raised in, in this environment of developing own three theology, and it can be a frightening matter. It's easy for us to say, well, you know, I think I'm just going to mind my own business. It's safer that way. I'm not going to say anything. I'll just deal with the people who believe like I do, and that'll be a comfortable situation. But that's not what God let Amos do, and that's not what God lets us do either. Through today's Old Testament reading, we see that God calls us to take a close look at ourselves and our calling from God. We see that God has granted us grace. And in that grace, we have eternal security. It's kind of like a, a young child, you know, you got, and I've got some young grandkids yet, and if they get hurt or they're a little bit afraid, they have this certain object they hold on to, and it can bring them comfort. Well, we see grace sometimes that way. It's our security blanket. We know our sins are forgiven. We know that the Good Shepherd has risen from the grave to be by our side throughout life, and we know we're gonna, he's going to take us to heaven. And so we have this security in him, and that's well and good. But you see, grace is bigger than that. Grace is also to motivate us to bring the warmth of God's saving grace to others. Do you ever think about the worldview from the biblical perspective? Do you ever think, why are you here? Seriously. If you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior right now, you're ready to meet him in heaven. So why don't we just die? We'd be better off if we died right now. We would be in glory with no more effects of sin, no more sorrow, no more illnesses, injuries, nothing. We'd have perfect life. But the worldview of life from the biblical perspective is that God, even when he has redeemed us for eternity, keeps us here because he wants us to be light bulbs radiating the light of Jesus Christ. He wants us to be lanterns who shine forth with the glory of God's grace through Jesus Christ in our lives. And that's what we see when we look at Amos. Who was Amos? It says in our text, he was a herdsman. It says in our text, he took care of sycamore trees. It emphasizes he was not a prophet nor a prophet's son. And yet to Amos, God says, I want you to go. This is exact words. Go and prophesy to the people of Israel. The people of Israel had forsaken the Lord. They had forgotten the worldview of life from the Bible. They had forsaken the Lord. And Amos is to go back and to talk to these people and to declare the word of truth to them. And this is what's interesting. The word prophecy literally means declare God's truth. Now, we sometimes think about it as foretelling the future, but that's secondary. The, word, the primary purpose of prophecy is declare God's truth. Amos was called by God a herdsman, somebody who took care of trees, 
And God says to him, you go and you declare to the people the reality of sin and call them to repentance. Help them to see the light that is found in Jesus Christ. Now that calling is why you and I are here today. We're here in a world of darkness, in a world that is more and more drawing away from the Bible, and even from salvation through faith in Jesus Christ alone. More and more people say, it doesn't matter what I believe, it's just that I believe it. That's the worldview of life today. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father but by me. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It's very clear from Scripture that Christ Jesus is the only way to heaven. And so you and I are called, by God's grace, to bring the light of Jesus Christ to the world. He brought us to that position through holy baptism. Kind of interesting this morning, the first service is little uh, Chloe Lachey Kuhn was baptized. God came to her and said, I am the light. He blessed her with his forgiveness. Listen to what Paul says about this with regard to our baptism. In Romans 6, 4, he says, We were buried with Christ through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may have a new life. Paul in that whole chapter 6 is saying, do I continue to sin that grace might be greater in my life? He says, no. You are graced with my forgiveness so that you live a new life. Through water and the word, Jesus says, you were tied to my death. You were washed, your sins were washed away. You were tied to my resurrection. You were given new life in order that you might proclaim the name of Jesus to all. And so we have this great commission of our Lord. And this is literally the literal translation of that verse. As you are going, make disciples of all nations by baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit and by teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. In the Greek, the command is make disciples. When are we to do it? as we are going, wherever we're going, whatever we're doing, in the grocery store, on the playground, in the classroom, at work, whatever we're doing, we are to be the light bulb for Jesus Christ. We are to have an impact on people's lives for him. That's why Jesus said in his Sermon on the Mount, you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. The world purpose for life, based on Scripture, is that we be the light bulbs for Jesus Christ to bring the truth of God's love to all mankind. Wherever we are, whatever we're doing. Peter goes on to say, and that means even when the going gets tough. It had, couldn't be easy for Amos, because actually, eventually, there would be the destruction of Jerusalem, it couldn't have been easy because these people were rebelling and God was going to bring them punishment and take them from their homeland. These people weren't going to listen to Amos, but God said to Amos, you go tell, you prophesy, you declare the truth that some might repent. So Peter, as he's writing to Christians under persecution and throughout Asia Minor, he says to them, in your hearts set apart Christ as God. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope you have. But do it with gentleness and respect. 
always be prepared to bring light to a world of darkness. It was really striking to me, and I didn't actually notice it until the first service this morning when we prayed it, but in the collect it says something, we prayed something very interesting. Give us pure hearts and minds to follow your son faithfully, even into suffering and death. See, what we prayed there was, Lord, help me to be a light bulb for Christ, even if it means suffering or my death. Now, that's rather interesting because in uh, the rite of confirmation, and, and uh, those of you who I was confirmed in the eighth grade, remember that one statement, I will suffer all even death rather than fall away? I didn't know what I was saying then. But I was saying, I will die rather than deny my faith. I am not going to let the world put my light of Christ away. And so that's what we were praying for there. Lord, help me be faithful, even suffering death. And Jesus had said it, didn't he? He said, if they persecute me, the master, are they not going to persecute those who follow me as well? Amos understood a worldview of life from a biblical perspective he found that his purpose was to share Christ and the truth of God's word as he was going. And that's our calling too. We have been saved by grace through faith that we might have an eternity with the Lord in heaven, but that as we are here on earth, we might share the truth of how that eternity can be had by all through faith in Christ. We may not have a deep theological knowledge of the Bible, and we may not be gifted in evangelism per se, but then again, Moses spoke God's truth, and he says, I wasn't a prophet, and I wasn't a prophet's son. I was a herdsman a dresser of sycamore figs. Like Amos, however, we are called. And like Amos, we can tell the love of Jesus. We can say he died for all. Amen. And now may the great and peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Pray that you are inspired by this message. Please join us again next week for another online sermon from Redeemer. 